Hello there guys, my name is Raxby and welcome back to some more Let's Play Professor Layton and the Lost Future. We're making our way over to the casino to meet this mysterious future look. So let's just go ahead, head north, because I think we're almost there. Ah, oh, well, there it is. That is definitely a casino, alright? Hmm, yeah, I guess we found Gilded 7. So, uh, yeah, I guess uh, we'll have to look up close and see the inside as well. But before we do that, if we check out this fountain here, you can see some splashes. And if we keep splashing around, we can find a hidden puzzle. Yeah, we've stumbled across a hidden puzzle. So, this is hidden puzzle number 144, Mr. 820. One of the five people shown below has a very unique nickname, Mr. 820. A rather odd moniker, I'm sure you all agree, though apparently everybody who sees this person thinks it's just perfect. Well then, who is Mr. 820? Circle this person and touch submit. So there are five people here and one of them is Mr. 820. Now it's pretty easy to dismiss uh, person C and D because they are women and uh, we have a Mr. 820 so those can't be it. Now another thing is to keep in mind is that um, every person who sees him thinks it's Mr. 820 so it can't be the clothes so while uh, A has the clothes that say 820 that it could be that someday he wears something completely different and the 820 wouldn't make sense anymore. And, you know, the same goes for B. B doesn't really have anything that says A20. But what about E then? Why is E A20? Well, if you look at the mustache, uh, if you see this as handles on a clock, uh, then the left one would point to the 8 and the right one would point to the 4 or 20 minutes past 8. So that is why Mr. E is 820. this I knew it and yeah there we go the handles of his mustache re represent the time on a clock pretty funny puzzle I I quite like it so yeah that was a piece of cake good job Luke now without further ado let's enter the casino and see if we can meet this mysterious future Luke Good evening, sir. May I see your membership card, please? Hmm, membership card? Hmm, the Gilded Seven Casino is a haven where society's finest ladies and gentlemen can gather. We check membership cards upon entry to ensure that less savory types are kept out. Uh, well, I've never heard of this policy before. So, could you make an exception, or can we maybe get a membership card? Hmm, your hat does show you have impeccable taste. If we can prove your intellect, then uh, yeah, we'll let you in without a card, just this one time. Well, let's uh, see if we can do it. Our hat is apparently helping us out, so I guess a top hat is proof of one's gentlemanly nature. Let's so see if we can solve puzzle 27, a game of cards. Here's a painting of two players in a fierce competition over a game of cards. At first glance, nothing seems strange, but occasionally people remark, if they're really in fierce competition, isn't this part of the painting strange? Circle the part of the painting that people would find strange, then touch submit. So, if we look at it, there might be some things that you think are strange for a fierce competition. My first guess would be there's candy on there. A fierce competition you would think they would bet with money, but that's probably dismissed to not represent gambling in a game, so they went with candy instead of cash to make it a bit more child friendly. However, if we take a look at this, at uh, the way this guy is holding his cards, uh, the cards actually overlap in the corners. He can't see the top corners of any of his cards. So he doesn't actually know what number the card is. So he doesn't really know what he has in his hand. Which doesn't make sense because if you're in a fierce competition you should know your hand. 
That should do the trick. Just as I suspected. And there we go indeed, if we would take a look at it from the other side. He just knows one card that he has in his hands, and for the others he does know the type, but not what the actual number is, so that's not really gonna help him out at all to win the game. Hmm, expertly solved, sir. You've earned the right to enjoy our exclusive facilities. Welcome to the Guild at Seven. Wow, fountains, a floor, rich owner. Well, casinos do make a lot of money from what I've been told. But uh, yeah, try to keep your voice down. Uh, we don't want to attract too much attention to ourselves, of course. But yeah, it's definitely an impressive looking casino. Mm, quite large, so it might be tricky to find your future self. Let's uh, see if we can do it. So you're... He's the future me? It's good to finally meet you, Professor. Or rather, I suppose I should say it's nice to see you again. It's me, Luke Triton. Hello, Luke. Well, this is interesting. Didn't take us any time at all, but he does look like Luke. Um, hi, Professor. Oh, you're talking to him. Yeah, uh, I, I figured that was clear. This is going to take some getting used to. Oh, I bet. I mean, definitely, like, when in class you have two different people with the same name, you generally need something to tell them apart. A last name would work, but you do share the same last name too. So maybe some char characteristics. I guess we should call him Future Luke and then keep our Luke Luke. That works for me, but does it work for them? We'll see. I can't believe how small I used to be. Oh yeah, it does indeed work, but Future Luke throwing shade at his past self. Hey! Small. So tell me, why exactly did you go through such pains to bring us here? I'll be happy to tell you in just a moment. But before that, I'd just like to verify that I'm dealing with the real Professor Layton here. Who else would I be? Yeah, I mean, we found all the clues that led us here. How else could it be us? Plus, we have Luke with us. Like, do you really think there are two copycats who would copy both Leighton and Luke and somehow stumble up on here? That seems weirder than us just being the real professor, but... Allow me to explain. In my London, it's rare to find someone who doesn't know the name Herschel Leighton. In fact, many imposters have come forth recently claiming to be him. Hmm, I see. Okay, that it makes a bit more sense. Are you saying you think the Professor is a fraud? Professor, if you think back on our adventures together, you may recall a man named Don Paolo. Yes, I remember him quite well. As you know, he was a master of disguise. Unfortunately, yeah, he uh, pretended to be Chelmy and... As well as Flora even, so he definitely knew how to disguise himself very well. How do I know the man before me now isn't Don Paolo in another of his costumes? That is weird, but it, I, I suppose from his point of view it could be. Now that's just rubbish, and you know it! Is it now? He's tricked us before. Who's to say he couldn't do it again? Very well. I'll play along. How do you propose I prove my identity? It's quite simple, really. Hmm? Professor, I challenge you to a battle of wits! A battle of wits, huh? Yeah, what exactly do you have in mind? Hmm, 
So yeah, I guess so. Uh, we have our doubts about your identity. That's definitely true. So let's uh, prove it. Prove each other's identity. That seems good. So we will demonstrate the power of our respective intellects. There's a puzzle that can only be solved by someone like us. And if we find the solution, then we can present him with a similar challenge. Sounds fair. And uh, yeah, if he is who he says he is, he should have no trouble solving it. I agree. So uh, let's get started. There's four cards arranged according to the following set of conditions. A heart is next to a diamond. A club is not next to a spade. And finally, a heart is directly to the right of a club. Using just these three conditions, I challenge you to find the spade amongst these four cards. So, uh, luckily we get it uh, on the top screen. It's also explained once more, so uh, we can work things out. Um, so let's uh, try to do just that then. Uh, we know that a heart is to the right of a club. Um, but it's also next to a diamond, so a diamond must be to the left of the heart. So a heart is somehow, uh, a heart must be either this, this, this one or this one must be a heart. Because it is uh, next to both a spade and a diamond. Uh, now we know that the club is not next to the spade. Um, so... That's good to know, you know, those are not next to each other. Um, but the heart is directly to the right of the club, okay? So let's say that this one here would be the club, yeah? Then to the right of it, we would have the heart, which would be the third card. And at the end, we would have the diamond. However, that means that the first card would be the spade. This is impossible because the spade can't be uh, right next to to the club that means that the heart must be this card here that means that uh, to the left of it is a club um, and then next to the heart of course is the diamond and finally um, the spade that we need is the card on the far right that that should be our layout so I'm gonna touch the card on the right because that's the spade And that is indeed the location of the spade. Very impressive. So yeah. Club, heart, diamond, spade. So yeah, thank you. So uh, how about a puzzle of our own design, huh? Let's see, what puzzle are we going to give him? So yeah, we'll uh, stick with a similar puzzle. But here are latent conditions. A club lies directly to the right of a heart. A diamond is on the far left or far right and has a heart next to it. And finally, a club is also the far left of far right card. Can you find the spade using these conditions? And now it's future Luke's turn to solve the puzzle. Let's uh, see how he handles this one. <laughs> you almost had me there. But this puzzle is flawed, it's unsolvable. Hmm, is that so? Yeah, but several... I've tried several solutions, but none of them work given the conditions. Is that really so? Tell me, did I ever state that the four cards on the table included one card from each suit? Hmm, so the answer is, there is no spade? Yep, it is quite tricky, but it was a trick question. Makes a good point, though. In the puzzle, you failed to specify that the four cards included one from each suit. Leaving in a loophole can make puzzle unsolvable. Same omission can also open the door to alternate solutions. You presented me with a puzzle like that, that is actually incomplete. It was the real test to see if it was, wasn't it to see if I could spot the loophole. It seems you're the genuine article, Professor. I'm glad to see that I've finally convinced you. 
To be honest, I was convinced from the beginning. But I just couldn't pass up the opportunity to pit myself against my mentor in a battle of wits. A battle that you lost, if I can offer my opinion on that. Hmm. I'm flattered, I suppose. So? Out with it! Why did you call us here? Hmm, there's a lot of eyes on us here. That That's definitely true, especially if Luke is gonna shout. So let's uh, go to a back room uh, so we can talk in a bit more of a private setting. But we have solved one puzzle, or one mystery, the future Luke. The young man singing, signing himself Luke Triton turned out to be an older Luke from 10 years in the future. He wrote to his old trusted teacher to request his aid. So, it looks like Luke is uh, standing here, so uh, let's uh, talk with him and see what he has to say. Hmm. Welcome to London of the future. Hmm. Still not convinced? You saw Dr. Schrader. The toll of time, the time has taken his toll on your mentor. Yeah, we did see him, he was in the hospital. And London, it's changed a lot. That's true too. Could there be a casino in this sleepy part of town? I I guess not. So yeah, everything did change. What happened? A genius appeared. An evil genius. And he turned the city on its head. Uh oh. Don Paolo took over the city? Don Paolo? Oh no. Not him. I'm talking about a truly brilliant man. <sighs> Sorry Don Paolo. You just got burned. Someone the three of us all know quite well. So if it's not Don Paolo, who are you exactly talking about? What do you think, Professor? Hmm, yeah, we really couldn't say. Just out with it. Really? Yeah, just just tell us, future Luke. Just tell us. His name is Herschel Layton. The evil genius is you, Professor. Well, there's a plot twist. We're an evil genius? Yeah, what? I was afraid you'd say that. That doesn't seem right. But apparently it is. They call him the devil in the top hat. He rules London from the shadows. It's common knowledge for people. So that solves puzzle number four, frightened Lon or mystery number four. I keep calling it puzzle, frightened Londoners. In the future, the city of London is in the thrall of an evil Leighton. The sight of the professor, who looks just the same as his future self, is enough to spark fear among the local people. Mm, yeah, tell us more, because uh, we need to know more information. Yeah, the other Luke. Goodness, let's uh, just call him Future Luke. So yeah, how did we rise to rule all over London? Mm, where to begin? Surely you remember this. Ah, right, the time machine presentation. Yeah, the accident. For us it was just a recent event, but Tim, it's 10 years in the past. So yeah, it's 10 full years since that fateful day. Hmm. Time travel, man, it's weird. The start of a dark period for London. The Prime Minister started missing, so the Parliament became utter chaos. I guess that does make sense. So what we witnessed was the accident that changed London. It was a complete failure. Mm, yep, the Prime Minister and the scientist. Dr. Stangun. Yes, they disappeared, including those two. Hmm, it seemed like they were killed. Yeah, and the papers say that a few of his assistants had also vanished. Well, that's the press, but what if Dr. Stangun was still alive? Hmm, that doesn't seem quite possible. But I guess it is. Dr. Stangan ex escaped the blast, but went into hiding to avoid reprisals after the experiment. 
Mm, I mean, he was responsible for the loss of the leader, so it does make sense that he wouldn't be too keen on uh, being in the public eye. So, desperate to lie low, he was given shelter by, well, us. Huh. Yeah, why would we aid him? That's interesting. Well, it's something Luke never understood either. In the months that followed the explosion, you grew distant. You began concerning with figures from the criminal underworld. The professor? Oh, that's very peculiar. Yeah, time does change people. Something about Dr. Stangan's research captivated you. You couldn't stop talking about time travel. You became obsessed with the idea of changing the past. Changing the past? Dr. Stangan was interested in continuing his research, but he needed money. So you used your intellect to assume control of the London's underworld. Huh. This is very, very interesting. Of course, some people tried to stop you, but none were a match for Professor Layton. Before long, you raked in cash from various dodgy businesses. Dr. Stangen got all the funding he needed, and before long, completed his time machine. So... You mean... Yep, the time machine in the clock shop on Midland Road. Though I suppose completed is the wrong word, as it's not quite complete. In what way? Well, the user can't select the destination. You can't select the place, nor the time you wish to travel to. So it's more of a tunnel between two periods in time. A wormhole, as it were. And by sheer chance, it opened in the clock shop and crosses the 10 years between our two times. So we can now go back between your present and future looks present. Hmm, interesting. So you used the wormhole to bring us the message and get us here. But the wormhole is very important to our future self. So. Apparently, our latent keeps an eye on it, doesn't he? How did you get access? Hmm. Well, we'll get to that, but there's more pressing matters first. Well, yeah, tell us, why did you call us here? Hmm. <laughs> we haven't lost touch at all, of course not. You want our help stopping ourselves? Yeah, you want us to stop ourselves? Well, the other latent is working to build a fully operational time machine. He's been going back into your time to get every bright scientist working in time travel. But why go to the past? Well, many experts were lost when Stangan's presentation went awry. So he had to go back in time before the blast to gather the talent. Interesting. Interesting tactic. Makes sense in the circumstances. But yeah, things are already bad. If we can build a fully functional time machine, things could get even worse. So, we need to stop him before his time machine is complete. And the only person who can succeed is, well, Professor Layton, right? Exactly right. We have to fight fire with fire, because no one else stands up to him. Hmm. But how? Yeah, we don't know the future London at all. We don't know where to even start looking. Well, that's something we have to overcome together. His actions are shrouded in secrecy. However, his base of operations is well known, so we can start with that. So this casino isn't his headquarters? No, it's just one of the ways he makes money. His headquarters are in the heart of Chinatown. Well, let's visit that place and learn it, see if we can learn more. But yeah, there's a lot of this situation that is very dubious and very peculiar. But uh, I guess we have to find future Layton and uh, figure out more. So yeah, he figured we'd say that. So uh, past Luke is also coming with us, of course. If we can't count on ourselves, who could we count on? Hmm, <laughs> that is a bit weird, but sure, that, that, that makes sense. Well, we'll have to get used to it soon because, well, we need to stop evil Layton and we need all the hands we can get. 
Ah, oh, but there's one more interesting fact. Mm, what's that? There's no record of a scientist matching Dr. Stangen's name and description. It's a false name. Is that so? Yeah, whoever he was, he hid his real identity from the people at the presentation. Hmm. Yeah, it did, did seem like very few people knew the man. So why did he use a false name? What was he planning? Another interesting question. A lot of things don't seem to make a lot of sense, but I guess we'll have to just figure them out as we go on. But uh, we can talk more later. For now, let's head back to Flatstone Street. With that, we got two more mysteries and solve two, but you know what? We'll talk about those next time as this episode has gone on long enough. Thank you guys very much for watching. If you enjoyed it and you want to see more, then do consider subscribing to my channel down below. And maybe leave a thumbs up on this video. And I will see you all next time.